Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again. Today, we're going to be talking about just the current state of gaming in general and the game industry and just how terrible it is for the gamer. And yes, we are going to be talking about mostly the new Star Wars Battlefront Collector's Edition or whatever it's called. I don't remember the exact name. Uh, Classic Edition, I think, is what it's called. And if you haven't seen the stories or the news about it all over Twitter or the internet just in general, it's getting absolutely decimated by reviews. I know Moist Critical and a couple of their YouTubers made videos about it. I'm not gonna go over the same points they did. This video is more about just, this is a perfect example of how terrible the gaming industry is as a whole. And just, I'm tired of it, man. I'm, I'm so sick of this. I, I kid you not, this is literally the third game this past month that I have pre-ordered or bought the day it came out. I played it for five minutes or 10 minutes or even gave it a fair share of an hour and a half and I got tired of it and had to give it a refund because of just how unplayable it is at launch. And this has to stop. This is right here going to be the death of gaming as we know it. And people wonder, game companies wonder, publishers wonder, why are gamers so fixated on emulation these days? Why are so many people going back to these old titles on N64, Game Boy, PlayStation 1, Xbox, you name it, right? Emulation has just skyrocketed in the past few years, and it's not because of piracy. A lot of people like to blame it on piracy, or we just want free games. It's not because of that. It's because of game preservation. We want to relive the glory days of when gaming was good. Yes, of course, still back in the day, we had stinkers that came out or games that were unfinished. However, it's just not the same it, it really isn't it's today when a new game comes out you have a one in ten chance of that game feeling actually complete and finished at the end of its life cycle for seventy dollars by the way every game nowadays is seventy dollars for a premium price some of them of course come out at cheaper so uh, for instance the battlefield or the battlefront game of star wars was thirty dollars and the expeditions uh the other game i'm going to talk about in a minute was forty dollars they're not full price games, and I will give them a little bit of a leeway for that, but they still cost money, hard earned cash. And the fact that we are play paying money for these games and they are treating us like we are the QA testers to tell them what's wrong with it so they can fix it down the line is ridiculous. I said this 10 plus years ago when early access became a really popular thing with like DayZ was one of the very first games that I remember, or maybe even Seven Days to Die. A lot of those early access games from back in the day when those first became a huge mainstream thing, I knew immediately that this was going to be the death of gaming. This was going to run into problems. A lot of people disagreed with me. A lot of people said, this is awesome. You can play games you've been super excited for earlier than normal. And to a degree, they are correct. There, there is certain good things about early access titles. One good example is Subnautica, one of my all-time favorite games. It was an early access release. I think it was early access for like four or five years before it finally full released. And the full product is a full game. There were still some bugs here and there that they fixed over the years, but very minimal. I mean, it was still a full-fledged title when it became full release. The story was amazing. The gameplay was wonderful. And a lot of that was due to the community playing the early access game and giving them proper feedback throughout the years. And that's how a successful early access title should go about it. You started out at a very cheap price for people who want to jump on and play early access, knowing it's a beta build, knowing it's going to be crap and knowing that there's things that are going to change. That I think is totally fine. However, when you release a game in early access, but it's basically the same price as what they're going to release it at, at full release. And there's really no major changes that happen from early access to full release. And they just say, oh, it's fully released now. That is what pisses me off more than anything because it's just the publisher and or the developer taking advantage of gamers from the, the very beginning. And not only that, but it's completely shifted how even full release games that aren't even set to come out at early access have pretty much have become a mainstream issue in the sense of take Call of Duty, for instance, brand new Modern Warfare 2 last year when that released at $70 USD, apparently a full fledged game ready to go. I could not for the life of me get that game to launch for the first 24 hours. Couldn't even boot it up. A lot of people on Steam were having this issue, and this was on PC, by the way. A lot of people were having the issue like me. Everyone was pissed off. The next day, we finally get into the game. It's working, but there's no content. I mean, the multiplayer, which is pretty much the main reason people play Call of Duty these days, 
let's be real with ourselves, the campaigns are like four to five hours max, very lackluster, and who cares about the story anymore? We're all about the multiplayer, so you're paying $70 to play this multiplayer game with your friends. And the problem was, not only were they having a ton of performance issues where the games just lay like crazy, the, the frames per second were absolutely god awful. And this is coming from somebody who has a 4090 GPU, a 7950X CPU. I mean, my PC is more than good enough to play the newest games at very high settings. And the fact that I was getting less than 30 FPS was just horrible. Even moving past the performance problems with most new games that come out, the actual content is just completely lackluster. And they trickle it out over time in these battle passes, or they just say, we're gonna put our game out there in seasons. So even though we create a game every year, which is a brand new $70 title, in that year, every three or four months, we're gonna release a new quote unquote season with new quote unquote content. In reality, that content has been finished before the game launched, but they're purposely holding it back to trickle it out little by little to the gamers to bring them back for more. When in reality, that should have been in the game from the get-go. We've been saying this since, I don't even know, 2013 maybe, 2012 they started doing this with games, and it's just gotten worse over time. We've gone through different iterations of bullshit from these companies and these publishers, like loot boxes, if you guys remember what EA was doing with that and Activision was doing with that. Thankfully, that's kind of gone away. But now we're stuck with the battle pass system, which is just the new loot box. It's so bad. It's an extra $10 that we have to pay on top of the game. And you have to pay $10 every three months or whenever the seasons reset. So yeah, it's just gross. It's horrible. And this is not the only example. I mean, look at Cyberpunk, for instance. I know that today, if you go and buy Cyberpunk, it's an amazing game. It's what it was supposed to be when it actually launched. But you all know what happened when that game launched. It was an absolute buggy, horrible mess. It barely ran. It crashed all the time. It was super glitchy. And it was so bad on previous gens that they had to completely remove it from the stores on PlayStation 4 and the Xbox. It's just like, what were they thinking? Why not just wait? Just hold it a little bit longer. Obviously, I'm not in the game creation business. I don't make games myself. I don't know all the ins and outs and all the business mumbo jumbo that goes on behind the scenes that make a game from start to finish there's probably a lot more that goes into it maybe the publishers are breathing down their necks and have a gun to their head and so you have to release it on this day no matter what it looks like or how it is and then you know they release it it's trash it's obviously unfinished it gets a ton of refunds and then the publishers blame the developers that definitely could be the case and that's why i'm more just upset about the gaming industry as a whole not necessarily one developer or one publisher it's everyone is doing this nowadays the only people that seem to be decent for the most part i'd say nine out of ten times is indie developers very small studios that make games for instance one of the best experiences i've had in a recent game was fumes that is a car combat related game obviously inspired by twisted metal and of course that's kind of my content here and that was the full first time in a very long time that I played a brand new game from start to finish that I absolutely enjoyed and had little to no issues with it. No performance problems, no crashing. I didn't have any issues with missing content. And it just, it, it was, and it was free. I mean, <laughs> what more can you ask for? You know, it's, it's so sad that a free game is so much of a better experience than a game I pay $70 for in 2024. It's absolutely dis disgusting. And this Battlefront situation is just icing on the cake for my point here. Like, it's a $30 game. It's not full priced. I'll give them that. However, this was marketed as like a remaster of these original classics. One to one remaster. They didn't change anything. If anything, they were supposed to add new stuff, new game modes and whatnot. And they even had a DLC maps and all this stuff. And it was supposed to be these grand 64 player multiplayer matches for the original Battlefront and Battlefront 2. Obviously, that just isn't the case. The major po point of the game, the online factor, is what's not working and why people hate this game and why it's coming across as a cash grab. So yes, the servers were terrible right off the beginning. And not only that, but when the game launched, it went live. They only had three playable servers. Yes, you can create your own server with private friends, but even then those weren't working for some reason. So yeah, more than 10,000 players were shit out of luck and not able to play the game that they wanted to or even paid for. Not only that, but when they finally added more servers, because I think as of right now, there's like 200 plus servers, thankfully. But even then, the servers run so terribly, there's so much lag that apparently the game runs like 29 FPS on a beast PC. 
and it crashes nonstop and there's the hit detection doesn't make any sense. It's just it's like playing online on the PS2 days and it's just absolutely horrible. It's it's broken. It's unplayable. This game should not have been released in its current state. On top of that, it for some reason is like 75 gigabytes of space it takes up, which that's a whole nother big issue is all these games are getting larger and larger and larger and without optimizations. So they take up all your hard drive space. You have to delete like four games just to get one new game. It's insane. And this game <laughs> has no reason to be 75 gigs. You can still go on Steam right now and buy the original Star Wars 1 or Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 as individual titles. They both still have online to this day that have dedicated communities and they don't look that much worse than this new collection, but they only spend like maybe 15 gigabytes total on your hard drive for both games. It just doesn't make any sense why these this one game takes up so much space and runs as terrible as it does. There's there's no excuses. So I return mine. I don't have any gameplay for you guys because I didn't even install it. I, I pre-ordered it. I paid it. I was ready to play it. And then when I saw the reviews come out and all the overwhelmingly negative reviews, I knew this was not worth my time. So I refunded it. And again, this is the third game in this past month I've refunded. Another game, Pacific Drive. I know that this one actually has been fixed, at least since I returned it. And it's gotten really great reviews since then. A lot of people love this game. And I do want to give it a try again in the future. But I'm still, like, upset. I still have a sour taste in my mouth because when the game launched, I played it on launch day. I literally could not get more than 30 FPS at all throughout the game. It was so laggy. It stuttered like crazy. And it just was unplayable, in my opinion. Like, I know some people can read that and be like, I play 30 FPS games all the time. What's wrong with you? Not only that, but it, it dipped below that, guys. Like, it would sometimes go to 12 FPS. It would just be super laggy. It was stuttering, and it was just really gross. It was horrible, like, unplayable. And this, again, was with a beefy PC and a game that's from an indie de developer that's not meant to take up much space on your hard drive and not much to run. So, again, it was unplayable, and a lot of people were having the same issue. It wasn't just me, so I just refunded it. Big oof. And not only that, but Expeditions, a Mud Runner game, was another one that I will say that it wasn't necessarily just the performance issues at launch that made me return it. It was actually the gameplay itself. It just felt very unfinished. It felt like a weaker version of SnowRunner, the previous game that they made. And I was just overall disappointed. So this one, is I wanted to put it last because it's not as good of an example because it's not necessarily unplayable. It still was playable, but it still had its issues with performance. I mean, I was getting like... 45 FPS max again on low settings and it just it was playable but it was not a fun experience and again the content itself inside of it was very mid I would say if they would have marketed this one as early access and and only sold it for 20 bucks I probably would have kept it I probably would have been more understanding but they, they label this as a finished full product and I didn't feel like it was so I got a refund those are just a few examples of very recent games that I've been very excited for. I pre-ordered, the game comes out, and I'm just absolutely devastated at the amount of content that's given to the player, as well as the performance is basically unplayable. It's just not optimized at all. I understand that when it comes to computer games, this is not including console games, of course, but even console games are coming out in unfinished states and unplayable states. It's mind-blowing to me. But when it comes to PC... I'm a little bit more understanding if it's not fully optimized at launch because everyone has different PCs nowadays. It's so easy to go out and buy different parts and create your own mega PC. So it's, it is difficult. I understand that to optimize it for everybody's configurations, but there's got to be a point where you just can't launch a game when 90% of people's computers are not going to be able to play this game the way it should. It's just... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. You, I hope you can understand my frustration in this video and how totally upset I am at the current gaming industry and just how down the toilet it's going and how not only all of that, but the fact that so many developers are losing their jobs left and right. No one has job security in the gaming industry is so depressing. It really makes me feel like less and less people are growing up wanting to become game developers. When I was a kid, and I'm about to be 30 this year, but when I was a kid... I wanted to make games. I loved video games. I wanted to make games and become a game developer and all that stuff. I never did, but I remember all my friends wanted to be as well. It was a really like hot profession to want to get into. 
but it was very difficult to, so that's why nobody I know at least did. That being said, nowadays, it's still difficult to get into, but now you don't have that kind of, I want to do this because I know how hard it is. Like, we can see it now that how terrible the industry is and how they treat their developers. It's just gross. It's it's all the bigwigs up in the towers that have their business suits on that just look at the money and not necessarily wanting to please the gamer. They don't give a shit if you come back and buy another game as long as you gave them money right now. And that's what's going to lead to their downfall. 100%. So yeah, this Star Wars Battlefront game was my last straw and the reason I wanted to make this video. I have ranted about this exact topic before in a previous video, like maybe over a year ago, but I just, I figured this was due for an update and the fact that it hasn't changed in over a year uh, is just insane to me. It's even gotten worse if that, and I'm just so tired of refunding new games. It really makes me scared for if we ever did get a new Twisted Metal, I might have been in the same boat where the game isn't even playable at launch and I would have had to refund it and come back to it later. And that just really pains me to say. So yeah, I was excited for Battlefront, man. I, I, I wanted to do a full stream of it. I wanted to play with you guys if you wanted to join my servers and stuff like that. And right now it's just not a reality. It just, <laughs> I don't see this game coming back from its epic failure launch right now. At least I don't want to give them any of my money. I hope a lot of people learn from this as well. Like don't be afraid to get a refund in certain situations like this. Like this is the whole reason Steam has a refund policy. I understand people get kind of upset like, well, Steam isn't taking any hit. Like you're taking all the money away from the publisher or from the, the developer when you do a refund, and even though Steam takes a cut of the profit when they when you buy a game. I get that. But in certain situations like this, that developer deserves to lose money, in my opinion. It's just, I don't know, man. It's so it's so shitty. Let me know in the comment section below what your guys' thoughts are on this. I don't want to ramble for 30 minutes here. I just wanted to get my quick thoughts out about this current situation and my thoughts on these previous games I've had to refund over the past few months, which is very sad. And it just truly makes me want to just continue playing old games that I actually enjoy and have fun with. And I don't have to worry about performance issues and all that crap. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, share, support as always. Subscribe so don't miss the next one. Hope we see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.